welcome everybody to the regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District, February 22nd. Our chair, Nick Rico, is uh, ill this evening, so I'm filling in as chair for him. And the first item will be the, uh, the roll call. Joe? Present. Jason? Here. Oh, thank you. Should I start over? Yeah, I want to start over. Okay, I'm going to start over. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Rookie move. Uh, this is the regular monthly meeting for the Scarborough Sanitary District. It's February 22nd, 2024. Call this meeting to order and do the roll call. Jason? Here. Joe? Present. Michael? Here. Tony? Here. And uh, Ruth Summers couldn't be here this evening. And uh, Nick Rico, our chairman, is feeling ill, so I'm filling in as chair. Next item is the approval of the January 25th minutes. Move approval. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Joe. All in favor? Any opposed? It's unanimous. Next, we have the superintendent's monthly report. A copy of the monthly report. A copy of the uh, monthly report of operations is included in, um, in your packet. Our average flow for the month of January was 2.16 million gallons per day. Our F1 quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 92% BOD removal and 96% TSS removal. Uh, for effluent concentrations of 13 and 6 milligrams per liter. Our effluent flow is high due to the two storms that flooded out the Higgins Beach and Pine Point areas with a peak daily flow of 4.3 million gallons per day on the 13th. A copy of the pump station flows for the month of January is also included in your packet. The Higgins Beach pump station stock reporting flows due to the flooding of the station. And the Pine Street pump station flows were high also due to the flooding of the area during the, the, the two storms. <clears throat> Our insurance company denied the sewage backup claim at uh, 4 Bay Street, stating that the cause of the flooding was due to ex the extreme high tides, not a failure of our system. I did meet with the homeowner who asked for an, uh, just an explanation of how the sewer system worked, and um, she seemed satisfied with the explanation. Very nice lady. She came down to the office. Um, Knowles Industrial Painting has completed uh, the budgeted painting in the headworks in uh, Pump Station 19, as well as the concrete heap here in the garage. They still have some work that they will be doing to the grit tank. Um, but they'll it's being scheduled for uh, springtime when the weather is uh, fair. Uh, Willette and Associates began our audit on Monday. Uh, they completed the, their on-site work to, um, Monday and Tuesday uh, with the help of Serena and Wendy. Um, so far, everything looks really good. They're very happy with what they've found. They'll probably have the audit ready for a presentation, not next month, but the month following, um, so April. And I did get uh, Don Hamill from the town council did reach out to me uh, with regards to uh, he. Um, th there is now a, apparently a, a council rep that. Um, and wants to be the primary contact for the uh, sanitary district and the town council. Uh, Don did st state in his email that he was planning on attending the meetings um, and was planning on coming, you know, would like to come down and visit with me at the facility. Um, and as of yet, he has not, I, obviously I offered out to him any time that he wanted to come down. I would certainly give him, give him a tour of the facilities and, and meet with him. Um, he has not reached back to me as of yet, but I hope that he does come down shortly. And that's what I have for my notes. Okay, thank you, Dave. I, just a quick question for the yes. superintendent, if you don't mind. A couple of them, actually. Um, we don't have any other known uh, insurance claims other than the one you mentioned that against, was denied. Against the district, no. Yes, none. Okay. okay. That was question number one. 
Question number two with regards to the town council member. I think it's great that they want to, is this something new that they've decided? Yeah. It's, that's my understanding, and uh, I just got an email from uh, Mr. Hamill about it, uh, well, between last month and this month, and certainly I've, I've, re I've spoken to him before via email and his wife, Sue, many times over the phone over various issues. Of, you know. I wasn't sure if this was something new that the council themselves had brought forth, that they were appointing somebody to be a representative. I believe it is the council. It's the council's The council's moves, not just yeah. an initiative that he took on himself. Yeah. Well, great to hear. I, you know, I think there's great ways we can, you know, help with the communication across the various boards. So happy to hear that. Yeah. It, they just on uh, to, to uh, add to that, um, is it something that the council decided to do across the board, like all, all, um, all um, councils, like all um, boards, like uh, is there someone on the school board from the council? I don't know. That's that. interesting. Yeah. I, I don't. I, I think that is a, a typical thing for councils to do is try to have the councilors branch out and show some representation on as many boards as possible. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the superintendent? Hearing none, <clears throat> we have no correspondence. We have no old business, so we'll move on to new business. And the first item is Uprise Partners IT Support Services. Uh, this past month, we were informed by our IT provider uh, that he was retiring at the end of March. Um, I reached out to several people for recommendations, and our website developer recommended Uprise Partners out of Portland and Bethel. The, prim the primary office is located in Bethel. Uh, they also had very positive references, which I did follow up on. Um, they're a small IT firm focusing on information technology, cybersecurity, and, and software engineering for small and medium-sized uh, businesses. Um, we had budgeted 6700 for these services, but this uh, proposed change will increase this line item budget to $30,000 a year. Uh, after reviewing our options, this does appear to be the going rate for these services. Uh, systems engineering uh, fee out of uh, Portland, who we, um, We've uh, I've been in communication with a number of times over the year over the years. Uh, their starting price entry fee is forty thousand dollars a year, a year annually. So I recommending uh, recommend authorizing the superintendent to enter the attached agreement amending the budget line for our office computer network support from sixty seven hundred to thirty thousand um, dollars. I do have the uh, one of the things I would like to add to that authorization is. Uh, pending a uh, positive um, uh, legal review from our attorneys. It, the, the contract is currently being reviewed by our, by our attorneys. And just as a side note, um, uh, Nick Rico's facility has, uh, they, they utilize the same firm that we had and they're in the same situation. And uh, he actually attended the same meetings that I had with Uprise Partners and um, he, uh, Wells will be signing on with Uprise Partners. Uh, they've already gone through the legal review of that contract, and uh, they'll be mo moving forward on that. So, you know, questions? Dave, have we looked in to see if the town was willing to provide these services with their IT department? Um, We've talked with the town over the years uh, with utilizing them for, uh, accounting, and it, it, it comes with a, um, a lot of constraints that w would impact how we do business and, and um, the state of communication that we have. Uh, would, I have my concerns on, on uh, being coupled by the, um, the ID department of the town, but we certainly could do, do it. That's how the district would want to, the board want, wanted to move. But I feel having the autonomous uh, gives us a lot more flexibility with regards to how we run our business down there. Thank you. We have a motion. Approve. Thank you, Tony. I'll second. Thank you, Jason. 
Discussion? Any further discussion or questions? All in favor? None opposed? Thank you, Dave. <clears throat> the next item is Beyond the Dome. Okay, Beyond the Dome is a startup company out of California. Who are, um, they're developing a sludge PFAS destruction technology, and uh, they have reached out to four plants, uh, uh, which they want to partner with in Maine, uh, York, Saco, Sanford, and, and Scarborough. The, the technology has been tested in the lab, and now they want to conduct full-scale testing at these f four facilities. I met with them in Boston during the New Year conference to, uh, to discuss this partnership and to provide details with regards to the district's operations. Uh, they have already uh, scheduled a trip out here in July that would further define the project and the project needs. At this point, they asked the district to sign the attached memo of understanding, which, uh, which legal review has been complete on, and pay a 5,000 fee to, to secure the partnership. I, you know, I have my concerns about its ability to, in a full-scale operation, but considering the importance of a positive outcome for sludge disposal in Maine, I feel it's worth uh, this investment to be on the forefront of finding uh, a technology to, to solve Maine sludge disposal problems. I request authorization to sign this memo of understanding and to pay uh, the $5,000 partner fee. fee. Uh, Bernstein Shore did get back to me with regards to the MOU, um, and they said it's, you know, uh, they have no real legal concerns with regards to it. They, they, it's very non-binding with regards to what the next steps are. Um, the only question they had uh, was what exactly do you get and who decides they are satisfied with regards to the $5,000 Fee and I can I can work with the uh, Beyond the Dome and, and get some more um, concrete resolution. And, you know, I'm going to reach out to actually the other three communities and find out what, with regards to their agreement if there's been any they had any legal changes to their agreement. Um, but I would like to at least move forward with this. I think it would be a positive um, position for the district to be in. Um, to be to, to work on helping to solve the, the problems with regards to PFAS and such disposal. Any questions? Yeah, I do. It's a great idea, Dave. I think PFAS is, is important um, look, to look into, and I think $5,000 is, is, is initial. Yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely worth the money. What I don't understand is they're trying to partner with a bunch of facilities that seem to line up, right, in, in a certain area. Um, I would like to understand down the road what their incentive is and what the goal is toward their customers. So is it removal of PFAS? Is it, uh, I guess I'm not really certain what they, what they actually do there, you know? The, well, the, 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 the technology at this point is cloak and dagger. To be, to be frank, it's it's um, proprietary, and, and I have I don't know the exact t exactly what they're doing. Um, the reality of it, their incentive is to make money. I understand that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and the way they're structuring they, their big picture game um, is to have that how they're marketing is that they would own the equipment, they would own the technology. And you basically would be paying a annual fee to them if, if you know this all moved forward. Yeah. And um, you know, frankly, the, that fee would be, I guess, it would be based on they would look at our annual current sludge disposal costs and probably be a nickel less. So would they would they pilot it at the they facility? They want to pilot okay, at our facility. That's, that's the point I was trying to yeah, that okay. They want to pilot a full-scale facility okay. uh, to see if it, the technology actually okay. will be work is one one thing, because I've seen facility, you know, pilots that work, but they're not necessarily operable. 
gotcha. you know, they, so there's, what does it need on the operation side of things to keep the technology working is, is really the key piece of it all. Sure, appreciate that, thank you. Dave, do we know of uh, any other areas where they've launched these programs? No. Okay. No. I also noticed that the deposit, the $5,000, is refundable if uh, we decide not to work with them on it within three years. Yep. Anybody like to make a motion, or does anybody have any more questions? I just want to make sure I understand completely what we're asking to do here. So they've approached us to, I mean, obviously we've struggled with the PFAS issue in general. Um, so my understanding is they want to come in and help us mitigate that issue? Basically, yeah. They have, they have a, a technology <clears throat> that they're developing or, or have developed, um, and the, you know, the end result would be a, um, a cheaper, safer dis technique for disposing of our sludge. Now, is this looking at for us to invest in infrastructure to implement their program, or are they going to have their own facility, or...? It, their, their system would be um, basically housed in their, those boxes, um, like on the back of a tractor trailer, Connox box, um, and it would be located on site. They need power that we would have to provide them to make the pilot for the pilot program. We would come in, it wouldn't be housed in our buildings, it would be on our parking lot, so on our site. Hey Joe, we're doing a pilot study right now for PFAS and Actin, for Actin Water. Uh, comes in a, in a cont container, right, uh, proprietary. You, we hook it up, right, and they come in, and uh, they, they do the own monitoring, they send data back to their facility. Um, at the end of the day, the output is, is monitored and, and total PFAS is recorded. Um, Suez is the company that does it. Suez does a lot of that stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a it's, uh, technology that uh, I think is a good idea. I think the, the initiative is still is a good idea. There's, there's a lot of companies out there that are trying to uh, get the, the golden loop on. <laughs> and, um, you, know, I, you know, I think this... This may or may not be it, but I think just by allowing facilities to come out and do full-scale pilot testing, I think is um, a prudent thing for the, the district to do. It's a good investment. Portland Water District has invested in, um, they, they, they've been doing a uh, technology they hired Brian Caldwell to do a technology um, uh, review, and I think they're going to do a full-scale pilot of a, of a program also. So th th there's other ones out there that are going on. So, Dave, do you know if York, Saco, or Sanford Sorry. is on board with this? or? Uh, yes, Saco. Uh, Sanford definitely has already issued them the check. Yeah. Um, York, I don't know what their status of payment is, but they are fully on board. And Saco, I'm not 100% uh, sure, but I feel like they're on, uh, on board also. <clears throat> I'll be meeting with those uh, four facilities in the near term just to, to talk about this one, uh, one uh, program. So the only thing I didn't see was um, how long this anticipated pilot is supposed to operate for, and then the next steps after that, what we anticipate that to be. We'll have to they'll have to be defined as we move along because I, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of unknowns right now. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to think of that as we go, like yeah. uh, what the expectation is for um, an answer to yeah. the investment. I mean, this is not unknown or uncharted territory for the district. Many years ago, they, um, they actually partnered with uh, uh, Katy International to test out what was called the, the Katy Mill. 
Sludge reduction. Uh, what's that? A sludge reduction. Was that sludge reduction? A sludge yeah. reduction yeah. system. You too remember that. Yeah. And um, right. it, it it was, you know, again, it was focused on reducing uh, sludge disposal costs. Um, unfortunately, it proved out that it didn't work. Um, so it, after a period of a couple months of testing, it got ripped out and went on its way. Yeah, I'm just cautionary. Um, I, I think that uh, we'd all like to see a, um, an answer to our PFAS problem. I'd feel a lot more better about it if there was a little bit more uh, understanding of the reputation of the company um, it, for that investment. Um, and, you know, kind of like an in anticipated timetable of, of their proven technology to see when we'd see what that looks like and also, uh, um, you know, what the future of that looks like for us moving forward. Um, that's, you know, the, the, the no timetable on the pilot and um, what the future of the program, what the idea is after the pilot is is kind of but i understand that uh it's we're dealing with pfas and it's a lot of unanswered questions so yeah i guess if i were to comment on it i, I with joe there I, in reading this and ben you mentioned the refundable deposit but this seems like words to me i i assume legal counsels looked at it but this says, you know, reached a mutual understanding on the specified terms of the early access program, timing, pricing, et cetera. Maybe you're privy to all that information, Dave, but I'm reading this, I'm not, as to what all those. So Words is, mean. is there an agreement? And do we know what we're going to get for this? Do we have an agreement with them to say, hey, we're not getting what we expected out of this? Yeah. yeah. No, and, and that that's uh, kind of what legal counsel said. It's the the memo of understanding is fairly loosey goosey written, mm -hmm. but the rest of the district there is essentially none. My, my other greater concern is is you know PFAS is uh, a buzz thing right now for environment right and cancer prevention and so on and so forth, and uh, I also don't want us to be taken advantage of by a. A non reputable source. Yeah, the startup company's been in business since 2019, so they didn't just show up. Yep, That's but true. And, and typically, those costs are incurred for them to come to the site, set up the pilot, connect it. That's nope. all on them. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. I understand. I'm, I'm not saying that's a bad idea, I just no. think we need to be careful, and I, you know, if it albeit in the grand scheme of our budget, it's probably a drop in the bucket in terms of investment for what could be you know, a great program that works for us in the future and saves us lots of money. So not saying that I'm not in favor of it, I just want to make sure that yep. you or our legal counsel, counsel understands what they're going to be doing and what the expectations are. That's all. Got it. Uh, and I'm with Jay, with that, I, mean, I think it's a minimal investment. I'd like to understand more. And you know, maybe understand what more they're gonna do. So I'd like to make a motion. I would I'd like to approve. Okay. Thank you. Second. Second, Mike, thank you. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you, Dave. That right. seems like a good opportunity to be remain on the forefront of that. <coughs> The next item is the Higgins Beach Pump Station number seven. All right, the Higgins Beach Pump Station was returned to service on the 6th and the generator was tested on the 8th. At this point, the, t uh, the, uh, the station is fully functional and uh, returned to pre-flood conditions. All the staff deserve uh, credit for getting the station back online as quickly and cost-effectively as they did. We were able to reuse a control panel from another pump station that saved us a lot of time and money. Our current cost uh, totals are around 37,000, including the bypass pumping and hauling. This does not include the cost to rebuild the driveway uh, at 23 Champion Street, which uh, will cost an additional 35,000. 
I do also want to uh, thank Alan Pearson of 24 Champion Street, one of our neighbors who allowed us to utilize um, his uh, electricity from his home while we were restoring ours so we, that we could run a, um, um, uh, the, an alarm system there to monitor the, the station. We do have flood insurance for the station, um, but it does have a $25,000 deductible and only covers the building and equipment. It will, never it will not cover the replacement of the driveway or jetting of the collection system, which is, a, um, is an, uh, another area that needs to be addressed. We have also submitted a cost uh, to FEMA, which includes system-wide impacts. Those costs added up to approximately $100,000, including 37 for the pump station, 35 for the driveway, plus the jetting. The one I did leave out in this and I, I, we did amend this uh, claim to include uh, flow that we treated. As I no noted earlier, we treated a peak day flow of 4.3 million gallons. If you look at the amount of flow in Jan January that we treated, um, <clears throat> it, it, uh, if you calculate an uh, uh, impact of the storms to the amount of flow, I think it came up to 18,000 million, 18 million gallons at a, at a penny a gallon, which is our cost of treatment. It's like another $135,000, which we're adding to that FEMA claim. So um, let's see. Flood resiliency upgrades is the next step. Uh, there are two key components. Uh, moving the controls above grade and replacing the existing pumps with submersible pumps. I've already signed a contract with Wood and Kern to design an, up, an above grade control panel. Uh, due to the constraints of the site, this is a formidable <coughs> task. And we are working with the engineers and the residents uh, to develop the best solution, um, including upgrading the electrical service from 200 amp to 400 amp. My current estimate for this work is about $100,000. This is for the electrical. The cost of the submersible pumps is, uh, is approximately 80. Uh, to this, we would have to add the cost of installation, whether we do a dry pit option or a fully submersible. Uh, using in-house staff for this work, my estimate for the installation in, in the dry pit option is about $100,000. There may be some flood resiliency monies uh, becoming available either through the state or FEMA. We are certainly exploring those options as they come available. Right now, the, the funding is a little bit like vaporware. Everyone talks about it, but nobody seems to be able to give you any. Um, and I'm recommending authorizing the superintendent to move forward with the flood insurance claim. <coughs> the driveway repair and the control panel resiliency upgrade and amending the budget accordingly. Um, I'm heading on down to Holden, Mass, not next week, the week after, uh, with Carl and Josh to take a look at a uh, dry pit submersible um, conversion that that town did at one of their pump stations to, to see whether that would so this is this is, this is a can station. So yes. we would put the dry pit pumps in the can. In right? the can. Okay. It's a concrete can, but it's that style of pump station. Yeah. Technically. So so the control panels and everything were down in that can, or okay. or concrete vault. Yes. Okay. And they are still down in that concrete vault. Um, when I met with FEMA and our insurance company uh, initially, uh, and FEMA, Cumberland County Emergency Management, and the insurance, they will only pay to return something to add pre-flood conditions, mm -hmm. which is kind of silly, but in the whole flood uh, mitigation or re resiliency as a whole, is the next step, and that's... Dave, have you looked at the conversion versus going dry fit? I'm going submersible. Is there, have you guys looked at those numbers? The Converting the dry pit with submersible, with dry pit submersibles, or just putting the pumps in the wet well? 
The, uh, yes, we've looked at that. The problem is the wet well is six foot diameter and the dry pit is uh, 10 foot. Yeah. So we have much more room gotcha. in the dry pit to do the work that we need to do. Uh, I guess I'll make a motion that uh, to authorize the superintendent to move forward with insurance claims and driver repair control panel upgrade just to get that on the floor first. So we can have a discussion? So we can have a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so. Second, Thanks, Joe. <coughs> second, Joe, thank you. Any and, additional discussion? Yeah, I just have one additional question, which would be, is it in our best interest to wait till the next budget year to look at the upgrades, or is that is that what you're looking down the road for uh, for these repairs to plan and then propose it in next year's budget? Or I mean, we had a once in a lifetime event. Apparently, that's happened twice in my lifetime so far. So I, I get the urgency and twice in a week. <laughs> it's in, yeah, it's in our best interest to move forward with these upgrade plans. But from a financial standpoint, I'm just bringing it up, it, w would it be in our best interest? Because it is a relatively big ticket item along with yeah. pump station upgrades that we have going on. Should we defer this to next year, maybe do the pre-planning this year and look at next year's budget for implementation? Just throwing it out there. We certainly can do that. I think we need to move forward with regards to the driveway. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the, the resiliency plans for the future of the pump station, mm -hmm. where, which I completely understand that it's it's urgent because we had a catastrophic event there. Maybe happen again next week. Who knows? But fiscally, are we in a position where we can do that comfortably as a board? Uh, fiscally, we are. We do have the reserves to allow us to do that work. Okay. Um, you know, um, I, I certainly am not rushing into um, starting the work next week I want to make sure that it all makes sense and that you know like going down the hole and make sure that the pumps would fit you yep. know if we can't even get the pumps in there it becomes a completely different project and a much more expensive project um, you know I'm trying to <clears throat> come up with a system and, and you know th trying to think outside the box so it, it it's it's a um, it certainly is a plan in development. Dave, um, Dave, I just want to bring something. So do you know what the, ele ele the highest elevation is? Do you guys do you have that flood elevation? Yeah. Okay. So I mean, typically, we try to raise everything, the control panel, the, the tube of the station, the generator, right, and, and the power okay. feed okay. to that location. So I guess my question is, are all these being addressed? Yes. Because that's that location is horrible for a station. I mean, I don't know. That's got to be the worst station you guys have in terms of other for, not for such a location. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, yeah. There are no alternatives, right, in, in the future <laughs> consideration. Um, well, there, there. Are, no, there aren't. There aren't. We can't move the station. <laughs> oh, that's what I was going to ask. <laughs> you know. Somebody keeps we'll saying, move Higgins Beach. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll move the station. <laughs> you know, if as long as they have houses down there, we'll have to have a pump station there. Uh, it's as simple as that. And um, now, I think it's what you're doing is the right thing. I just, I just, based on the events that we just discussed, they're getting worse and worse. And, and thinking about where, where the cell, where you're going to put this equipment again. And to avoid a future uh, event like this, right? I would say that we probably should consider that that elevation. Yeah, the the um, I think of 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 everything, I really would like to move forward with the control panel because that's really the the Most umbilical probably. cord. Yeah. Um, the pumps, we were able to, you know, we got them going within two weeks, so it's it was. And we lucked out with regards to the control panel because we had replaced a control panel and a pump station, and Carl put the old one on a shelf. And um, so, for, you know, and we we're fortunate that we were able to make that work. Yep. We don't have any more of those on the shelves. Agreed. Is there? 
like I know this may be talking about pennies here, but the driveway repair and the other things will that be affected? So we repair a driveway this year, and we decide to defer this to next year. The next year's budget is that we're going to have to tear up a driveway again to well, to make the modifications. I mean, I, I know that sounds silly, but those are steps that we should consider as well. No, 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 no. If if we just went forward, move forward with the driveway repair at this point in time, I would lay down a conduit from one end of the driveway to the other end of the driveway for the new electrical service. Got it. Um, and so it would at least be in place and we wouldn't have to dig it up to replace it. Understood. That's all the questions I have. Any other questions? Okay, all in favor of the motion? Yeah. I... Unanimous passing. And I'll certainly keep the board up on every step as we move forward with regards to it. Thank you. Here, we find out in Massachusetts. What's that? We're going to hear we find out in Massachusetts. The next item is pump station number one, snow scanning road. On Thursday, February 15th, we received bids for the construction of pump station number one replacement. We had five bidders with the low bid coming in at $2,648,215 uh, $2, as submitted by T Buck Construction. Um, the engineer's estimate was $2,000,000. Mine was 2.5, but uh, a summary of the bids follows. 2.6 million six hundred forty-eight thousand two hundred fifteen for T Buck. 2 million seven hundred twenty-five thousand for Northeast Mechanics. 2 million uh, seven hundred forty thousand for Apex. Then 3 million six hundred fifty-five thousand for PC construction. construction. So we had three very good tight <coughs> bids. Um, the uh, Underwood uh, reviewed the uh, T Bucks bid and certified as them as the uh, lowest bidder. Um, I recommend authorizing the superintendent to execute the contract documents with T Buck and utilize the funds from the capacity reserve account to fund this project. Motion to approve. Thank you, Jason. Joe with a second. A second. So, Discussion? Yeah, I have a question. I'm, I'm sure that this was bid as lump sum, so we really can't compare the engineer's $2 million <clears throat> estimate or your $2.5 million yeah, estimate. Mine, mine was uh, by the seat of the pants. Oh, okay. Uh, so we really can't, we really don't know where, where the difference lies, whether it's pumps or electrical equipment or what. Uh, the contracts is, were saying materials of just yeah. gone up yeah. in yeah. cost. Yeah. They, do you know, do you know what, the, what the actual construction time for this project is? Two years, a year and a half? Yeah. Or a I want to say it's a year. Is it a year? I can't, I okay. can't remember. Huh? Even with the way materials are going, trying yeah. to get stuff? Okay. And I would have to say to have three bids within 100 and... Are they close? Hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> two that's, two within yeah, yeah. fifteen thousand dollars is uh, pretty extraordinary. So I think they, good. they really sharpened good. their pencils and did a good job. Well, it also demonstrates a, a good set of bid documents. Absolutely. Any other discussion? All in favor? Passes unanimously. Next item is 2 Stewart Drive. On behalf of Dunstan Properties, Sebago Technics requested uh, district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the sanitary wastewater from a proposed 4,228 square foot single story mixed use building. The building will house a 1,500 square foot smoothie bar and a 2,725 um, square foot uh, office space. The recommended typical sanitary waste uh, flow requested for two Stewart Drive will be 277 gallons per day. I recommend approval with the following conditions. The wastewater flow allocation is limited to the 277 gallons of typical sanitary waste. Any flows more than the allotment or characteristics are subject to additional approvals. 
The 277 gallons per day wastewater flow is fully subject to the district's capacity reserve fee. Uh, the capacity reserve fee is $19.65 per gallon and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR uh, construction cost index. Uh, based on the current rate, the total capacity reserve fee due is $5,443.05. Any flows more than the approved allocation are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. And a properly sized grease interceptor uh, grease, uh, will, will need to be installed in the smoothie bar to capture any kitchen process, was, uh, process water. The interceptor will adhere to district's fog policy. Oh, um, the the, the, the uh, usage. Uh, Motion. Is it based on water usage? Wait a minute, Tony. Let's have a motion. Motion to approve. Oh, sorry. Thanks, Joe. Second. Thanks, Jason. Sorry. About that. Yeah, Tony, no problem. I'm sorry. About that. <laughs> I messed up. Um, when you guys set the the the, the usage, right? Mm -hmm. Is it based on water usage? It depends. Oh. Um, we in our standards, we have some stand uh, standard water flow that is applied. Okay. Uh, for certain like residential housing. Oh, I see. All right. Yeah. Um, and some commercial space and office space. The, uh, the office space is based off our, of our standard. The smoothie bar is based off of a similar type facility. Okay. okay. Thank you. And if we don't have in, that information, we utilize the main subsurface standards um, with the exception of, or the understanding of, that the main subsurface rules, their design standards, are based on a max day. Okay. And our fee is based on an average day. Ah. And so the difference between max day and average day is about okay. two times. Okay, that's fair. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It passes unanimously. Next item is 30 Center Street. On behalf of Ventanove Holdings, am I saying it right, Tony? Associates, uh, uh, St. Clair Associates requested district approval to connect and discharge to the sewer of the sanitary waste fire from the proposed 19,280 uh, foot, square foot office building warehouse combination. The building is located on lot 48 where, within the Innovation District at the Downs. This lot is a consolidation of lot 48 and 49, and the consolidated lot is now known as lot 48. As part of the development of the Innovation District, the parent lots each uh, were allocated 160 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. With that, the consolidated lot has a wastewater allocation of 320 gallons per day. Anticipated wastewater flow for the proposed building is 150 gallons per day, well within the wastewater allocation. I recommend approval uh, with the following conditions. The wastewater flow is limited to 320 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. Any flows more than that, the allotment characteristics subject to additional approvals. The capacity reserve fee for the approval approved allocation of 320 gallons per day was previously paid for as part of the development of the Innovation District, so no additional fees are due currently. Uh, any flows more than the approved allocation are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. Motion to approve. Thank you, Joe. Second. Second. Oh Thanks, oh Tony. God. Any discussion on this one? Hearing none, all in favor? That passes unanimously. And budget uh, summary. Uh, the one month budget summary is included in your packet. I recommend approval. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion on the budget? All in favor? It passes unanimously. I don't see any opportunity for public comments, <laughs> so we'll move to trustee comments. Joe, you want to kick us off? Sure. Um, <clears throat> just uh, like to thank the staff and the superintendent, and uh, as you uh, modestly discussed, uh, 
a good set of bid documents made for a competitive bid for the uh, <clears throat> snow scanning uh, replacement. Uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, attention to detail is important when we're dealing with that type of stuff. So I appreciate your, uh, your spec documents being in line to keep a good competitive uh, bid process. And uh, thank you for all your information tonight. Look forward to hearing from your trip from Massachusetts and maybe we'll solve PFAS. So. <laughs> Jason? Yeah, I uh, echo comments of Joe. With thanks to the staff, especially all the work on the Higgins Beach pump station. I know that wasn't easy. All of the work that went into the various storms we've talked about in the previous month, but the work on that station, getting it back online so quickly and uh, efficiently was, was great work by everybody. Um, thanks to Serena and Wendy for all their work on the pending audit. I know it's going to be uh, a lot of work coming up and um, wanted to send my condolences out to the family of Daisy Higgins. Uh, Daisy's a longtime Scarborough resident who passed away last week, unfortunately. Um, always saddened to hear these longtime residents that have been around for 90 plus years in the town that have passed on. So my condolences to her family. Tony? Thank you. Um, you know, I, I think this, I want to thank your staff, Dave. I mean, when we have events like this, it, it can be ca catastrophic. I mean, to have your guys respond, get this thing up and running, back online, is a credit to what you guys do. I mean, it's just, a, uh, I love the district for that. They're on top of stuff all the time, and uh, they have a, a dynamite crew that can do a lot of stuff. And uh, that's just, again, credit to you guys. Um, and being proactive with PFAS, I think that's, you know, I think it's a great opportunity. Startup companies give you give you a chance to to buy into something, right? And uh, we, we would like more information on it as you as you proceed uh, with it. So, and appreciate the trustees for all your input. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. I mean, uh, thanks, Tony. Go ahead, Mike. So, yes, you know, congratulations to the staff. Um, you know, with with the uh, all the wet weather events. I know, Dave. You mentioned that the uh, Average flow for the month was what 2.16 MGD, and I think normally it's like what 1 1.4, 1 1.45. 1.4, 1.5, yeah. Yeah, typically. so so job well well done with that. Um, also, when they come out in July, um, they're not doing the pilot testing then they're just looking <coughs> looking over the uh, the process yeah it's just a, uh, a site visit to uh, look over the the uh, various treatment plants and and uh, what, what it would take to set their their equipment there yeah. and what would be needed um, you know if we're lucky I, I don't know what the time framing is but if it overlaps a district meeting I'd certainly have them come and visit yeah. and make okay. a presentation um, or maybe if it doesn't, we have uh, a special, I can arrange a workshop. Um, we can do that. Okay. Uh, one last thing. Uh, the rollout of the website, that's pending. The rollout of the website has been <laughs> has off been my radar for, oh, okay. <laughs> for this past month. <laughs> uh, something else took my attention. <laughs> Um, but yes, it is pending. Uh, I believe we have all your photos, and I, I, they, they, they sent me um, all, all the photos to, to with like three different selections, and I, I took it upon myself to pick the, the better of the, the three. Um, it's amazing how some of them, there was actually no difference between the three. <laughs> um, Yours especially. Yours, you look the same in all your pictures. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, well, yes, that is okay. pending. Okay. All right. Yeah, thank you to the staff for another great month. Uh, there's a lot going on in the district as far as development goes, and we seem to get a curveball thrown at us pretty regularly over, over the past year or so, and we... Uh, we just hit it out of the park, which shows how amazing our staff is and how well run our facility is. Very impressive. Thank you. Thank you. And
final motion. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Jason. Thank you, everybody.